Hey guys, a new phase two of Gods and Chain content today. But I've got a two card combo that you don't need to start using right now. The village vendor dodge getting nerfed yet on the card changes, which is super lucky. But I've got a starting combo that would literally equal W's every time. Most of the time, your opponent won't even fight till the end. So sit back and let me show you a couple of games so you can learn the combo and start getting more wins in your rank game. So like the video if it helps you and subscribe for more playtime content and let's get into it Sharks. It's time to show you how overpowered this combo is and the key thing is to try and get both cards in your hand as soon as possible. That means the vendor and the guard and luckily here we got the guard straight away and during the switching of the cards we got the vendor so we're set up we're good to go for the, pretty much the w because once we got both cards the only thing that can go wrong is us playing this early because we're playing it early for the synergy look at our power surging like we need it down early so then we can play the guard in the second turn so we can maximize the buff because in the early stages we'll have loads of cards in our hand and with war, after the early stages, we might not have any cards in our hand. So as you can see here, we played the guard, and then it's over the next one. And then that activates the, the effect twice. So look at the card that's getting the buff twice. Look at the power, the synergy. It's like Super Saiyan Gohan 1. That's flying in and that's winning. Like, that's so much power. Let's look at Surgeon. And then all we're going to do is just focus the god. We don't really want to worry about the monsters. And especially this one, because I don't know about you guys, but I hate shields. Shields are the worst thing in the game for me because there's no way to really get around them. And then they play a monster which I really should have read but because I'm an ex go player I never read my cards and it definitely hurt me in this situation here. But for them they, attack, they have to attack my guard because obviously it's got frontline which allows my vendor to have a little bit of protection, have a ward and it definitely paid off there. And now we activate its effect again. And considering we play a low mana deck, because it's, you know, it's war, we can activate its effect consistently over and over and just power up our cards constantly. There's so much power. Like, look at our two mana card. Seven power, five health. Five health. And once we empower it, it will go to seven, seven. And like I said, all we're going to do is ignore the monsters. But we should have read effects. Like I said, my normal strategy is to ignore and just go for the god. But I should have read the effects because effect, that monster on the left hand side puts your monsters to sleep. And I didn't realise that until it actually happened to me. And I was thinking to myself, oh okay. But like I said, they get rid of my guard again, give my vendor more protections, and give F1 protection. But they did attack it in the end and destroy it. But the damage is done. What are you meant to do now? Like my, my monsters are already powered up, they're already synergised, like they're already like, they're already ready. Like, the microwave thing is done. And the ward protections are so good. And like, now I realise, oh wait, my monsters can't attack. I best we start reading some cards effects because I've, I don't know if you don't do the same. You don't read the cards effect until it happens to you, which is a very bad habit. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna start killing some monsters. It's great, I'm at four mana, and that is when Wolf Cut comes into play. And Quay's been, in, Quay's been powered up, he's now at seven, seven. At four mana. Uh, what are you meant to really do here? So I get rid of both these pesky cards that definitely annoyed me. I took it a bit personal. And then, you know, that was it. Set up. And for them, I realised I needed to clear their board because they didn't have any cards in their hand. And as exception wants, they want loads of cards in their hand. And right there, they were probably looking at themselves like, what do I really do here? And they knew it. It was over. There's no way for them to come back from this. And my monsters were too powered up. But let's get into the next game. So let's get into the second game. I showed you how overpowered this combo is against Deception, but now it's time to face the Aggro Light. The thing is, with War and Light, they combat well against each other, but we want to do the same thing we did in the last game, which is get both the cards in our hand as soon as possible. We want the Guard and the Vendor in our hand as soon as possible. But if we don't, hopefully we get it in the second turn. But in this game, boy, we got lucky. In our first turn, we have two in our hand. So we have, we have a bit of flexibility. So when we play it down this turn, it's not as much of a risk. We got backup. We finally got some backup. But now we're just going to be waiting on them. Let's see what they do this time. 
The thing is with the, with the vendor, you have to target it and try and get rid of it as soon as possible. And if you don't and you allow it to get its effect off at once, even if it's once, it's too powerful. Because it, look at him now, he's thinking, okay, I'm going up against vendor. What is he gonna, what, what should I do? In my hand, I have a bunch of monsters that are low mana that can attack the next turn. I can't really do much. What do I do here? And for me, I, I love playing against Light because I know they don't really have much variation in their deck, so you know what they're gonna do. So he plays his little monster now. And for the next one, this monster's normally a bit annoying to get around, but as we're not attacking monsters, we're just going straight for the god, it don't matter to us. So we activate the combo, the power. Let's look at the synergy, look at the buff, and it's a vendor. The vendor's getting the double buff. It's kind of, it's kind of ironic in, in reality. And that, that we normally do, we have to go straight for the god, ignore everybody. Because it's their problem to get rid of our monsters. It's not our issue what they have. Unless they're going to put our monsters to sleep at the last game. But they're just stuck. They just don't know really what to do. And I see this a lot when I play this combo. People stun their, their turn a lot. But here, you know, considering their strategy is all about minusing attack and attacking like low, attacking monsters with like zero attack. It's not going to work with me because my monsters have so much damage. It could take you forever to get rid of them. So here I'm thinking about should I play the second vendor, but I didn't because I want to save it because I don't know what's going to go on. I don't know what random blitz card or spell card can come up anywhere, but I do have the ward for protection. But if you're going to sit here, it's pondering. I like, okay, I got a 2-3 card I need to get rid of, but I have a 5-5 five, five monster that I can't really just leave on the board. And I'm just going to attack. In his mind, he thinks he's going to out-aggro me and heal over time. That's never going to work here. So now I'm like, okay, do I use my mind at all? Or do I go all out? And now it's time to go all out. Play the double vendor. Now, we basically have the guard strategy. We're kind of different. We play one monster and we get double buff because we have two vendors. And I was just looking at our monster's attack because I was just laughing to myself. I was just like, do you know how much damage I have? And my opponent must have saw what was going on, or he was drinking the Jack Daniels. But he must have realised that he, it was over. The game was done. It's finito. Like, my power level was like well over 9000 at this point. And he's just pondering to himself, what is he going to do? What is he going to do? And I realised that I got to him when he'd done his move. But it's going to take so long to do it, we're going to have to skip a bit. And skip a bit more. To about here. And then let's watch what he does here. You can tell he was fried. Because look at it, the rick's going down. You can tell the pressure's getting to him. So he decides to forget all the game's mechanics, everything that makes sense in the world, and then play a spell card and use it on a card that has a ward on it. And when he saw the psh, his mind went psh, and he had to leave the game. The combo is so overpowered, you need to use it straight away. As you can see, the vendor is so overpowered and it's even better if you can set up your hand with a double buff with the Pantheon at the beginning. The game nerfed Blood Oath so badly, but vendor dodged it so well and now it can still rain terror like Godzilla all over everybody. But get ready for more overpowered combos in the future, but that's it for me today. So like the video if it helped you and subscribe for more play to earn content and remember, be a shark in this space, not a whale. I'm going to see you guys next time.